At a time when countries across the globe are moving towards sustainability and decarbonization, in India, IIT Madras and the Indian Railways are looking at ways to develop cost-effective Hyperloop technology. Today, Swisspot Technologies, a Swiss startup company, and Tutor Hyperloop, a spin-off of IIT Madras, are signing an MOU to take this research to the next step. Today, we have with us Dennis Tudor, the CEO of Swisspot Technologies, to talk to us about the implementation and scope of Hyperloop technology in India. Thanks a lot for having me here. So to begin with, what is the significance of this collaboration and how do you think this will improve the scope and implementation of Hyperloop technology in India? So first of all, Twitter, I think it's an amazing uh, company, which is a spin-off of IIT Madras. They've been an incredible research on the, on the domain. So uh, not only that, we, we join forces here to um, assess the Indian market, but in the same time, uh, the most important fact of our collaboration is that we see the product of Hyperloop happening in the same way. So we have the same vision with, uh, with the people from Twitter, from IIT Madras, as well as with the Minister of Railways, uh, Ashwini Vaishnav. I think all of us have been aligned when it comes to the Hyperloop product uh, that needs to be done in a commercial way on the technical details, on levitation, propulsion and uh, stability of the vehicle. So I think that's been something really great we, we have as a collaboration with, uh, with Uter. I think this can be, uh, both companies have been actually granted by uh, uh, the government. So we've been financed by the Swiss government, they've been financed by the Indian government. And I think together we can join forces and we can use our um, uh, IP and their IP together and uh, start producing and manufacturing something here in India. I think that's an incredible uh, opportunity for both companies to, to work together in, uh, in India to improve uh, the infrastructure and high-speed transportation in the, in the country. So you mentioned that the Swiss government and the Indian government have a common vision when it comes to Hyperloop technology. Could you talk a little bit about what this common vision is? Yeah, so we're envisioning infrastructure which are fully passive. Uh, today, you, you can see high-speed rail that they have a catenary or they have magnet system with permanent magnets attached on the infrastructure that the cost of such infrastructure are very high. So we're moving the whole technology on the vehicle, on the capsule. Therefore, we make all the infrastructures to be passive and the, the capsule are self-contained. So we create the whole propulsion, the whole levitation stability from the capsule themselves, while on the tube you will find only a simple rail on, alu on aluminum and steel. Therefore, the cost of the infrastructure are going to be very competitive with what exists today in the market, and the return of investment is going to be like in a is going to be um, enabling low prices on the ticketing. So every Indian person could run uh, on a hyperloop, or any package that needs to be transported in time is going to be inexpensive to to do it. So, so it's a very cost-effective solution. It's a product that we envision very similar similarly and uh, it's going to be very cost effective to uh, to the uh, any citizen of uh, to any citizen in uh, india at a time when most countries are moving towards sustainability and decarbonization how do you think hyperloop technology will contribute to this discourse and help countries like india decarbonize so i think that's crucial i think that's a very uh, crucial element for hyperloop uh, the main unique selling point, the, the, the unique selling point for uh, Hyperloop today is the energy efficiency and sustainability at high speeds. If you look at any alternative today in the market, um, it's, it's not going to be comparable with, uh, with Hyperloop. So we're talking about aviation sector, that's going to be 600 watt hour per passenger per kilometer energy consumption. In our case, it's going to be around 50 watt hour per passenger per kilometer. Uh, which is uh, more than 10 times lower in terms of energy consumption for very similar performances. Uh, when it comes to the uh, high-speed rail, the cost of the infrastructure are going to be lower. Therefore, I think um, uh, Hyper represents a very good alternative to the existing solutions, but I think there is a place for everybody in the market. So we're not here to compete the aviation sector or um, railway sector. We're here to come up with a complementary solution that would enable energy efficiency and sustainability at high speeds. It's crucial for a country like India, where infrastructure, they, you know, they are still, they are not yet there like um, in the, let's say, Western world. It's very important to invest in new infrastructures that would enable um, kind of a future without too many CO2 emissions. So, so in India, 
The Indian Railways is collaborating with IIT Madras to develop Hyperloop technologies. As someone who's been in the industry and working uh, on developing Hyperloop technology for the past decade, how do you think governments have been uh, reacting to Hyperloop technology? What has their attitude been? Have they been uh, apprehensive or receptive of Hyperloop technology? So I've had, I've had a lot of good conversations with, uh, with the local authorities here in India. I think I've, I've met um, uh, three times in one year the Minister of Railways, uh, and we had an amazing discussion. So uh, especially uh, the discussion we had in Zurich, I think, was really great. Um, I also we also been approached by the Swiss government to 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 have a potential feasibility study in the country in the U.S. as well, but I think the market and attraction drive it's uh, much better here in India. It's um, I think it's a great place to start to start with new type of infrastructures in the in the country. So I've been really impressed by the country. Earlier last year, Niti Aayog member V K Saraswat questioned the feasibility of implementing Hyperloop technology in India. So what do you think are some of the challenges of implementing Hyperloop in a country like India? Challenges are real and perception of people, you know, uh, might be true about Hyperloop. So, uh, but what I can tell you is that in five years we managed to put in place a capsule running in a reduced scale model and we are building our full scale model. So in less than five years as a a uh, young company as a startup, we managed to put in place two different infrastructures and now two different capsules that shows the feasibility of Hyperloop. With the right technology, this is going to be uh, feasible from the technological, uh, from let's say from the product point of view as well as from the economics point of view. Um, so, but in the same time, I kind of understand the concerns and the challenges. I think they are real. But what I can uh, reassure you is that we're working towards that with our partners at Twitter, and that's why we are here. It's not always about the, the final result we're going to have, but it's also embracing the progress of the whole technology. And the numbers look feasible, and the path we took, I think, is the correct one. And I think we need more support from local authorities, as well as from Swiss authorities and from private sector as well. So uh, we, I'm not here to tell you that tomorrow we're going to have Hyperloop. But I think in two, three, five years from now on, we can start already thinking of a commercial route, such as in 10 years we might have such a commercial route. Uh, I'm not here to tell you that this is going to happen in one year. Um, and, but yeah, some of the concerns can be real. So um, yeah. Thank you so much for joining us, Dennis. Thank you. Thank you.